Welcome to the NeverEnding Backlog Podcast, your place for short reviews from a gamer with the goal of reducing his backlog. From adventures to sandboxes, join our host as we walk through a collection of unplayed treasures. Now, let's take a look at the featured game of this episode of the NeverEnding Backlog. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the NeverEnding Backlog Podcast Series. I'm your host, Zach. And happy Thanksgiving if you are celebrating it. If you're not celebrating Thanksgiving, I hope you still have a great day. And I hope you have something that you're thankful for this crazy year. You know, we've had a lot of great achievements this year. We obviously launched this podcast. Uh, This week will actually be our 50th episode on tomorrow, actually. I got some great games throughout the year. Uh, Played some new games, learned a lot. Uh, Spoke with some great developers. Got some really cool stuff coming up in the pipeline. I uh, got a lot of interviews coming up with more developers, some more free giveaways. Uh, got some stuff from Sideshow Collectibles. So if you follow me on Instagram, I definitely recommend checking that out. You'll see all the cool stuff we've picked up. I also do on Instagram because I was having a hard time figuring out, like, I don't want to just share episodes on there because I share it on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and my website. I don't really need to share it on there as well. So what I do is I actually take pictures of my big box PC games. So a lot of vintage stuff. So a lot of Star Wars stuff. You know, like X-Wing and X-Wing versus TIE Fighter and Indiana Jones. Because I have a large collection of these games and a lot of them are new in the box. And a lot of them also have a lot of cool freebies and like items they come with. Like, I don't know if you're aware of this, but like Diablo and StarCraft in the past, they would include like notebooks and a lot of flyers and a lot of freebies and a lot of pens and all this random stuff. And it's just super cool that they did that. And that was a big memory I had with, you know, those type of things is, Yes, you knew you were going to get a CD or a diskette that actually had the game on it, but you never knew what else they were going to put in there. And a lot of game developers would go the extra mile and put some swag in there, which I thought was really cool. Um, also, I'm thankful for the autumn sale on Steam. Uh, I got to play some new games. I definitely picked up a few new ones. So maybe next week will be Steam autumn sale review. I picked up a lot of cheap games because uh, they're just as good as the expensive games. And this podcast has proved that. A lot of indie games are just as good, if not better, than some of these AAA titles. Um, but obviously, this week is still Halo Week. And today we're reviewing Halo 3 ODST in the Master Chief Collection. So I do remember playing ODST and playing it with a friend on the three, Xbox 360. You know, I know it was more of an expanded Halo Universe game. However, the voiceover cast is phenomenal. So I had fun recognizing the voices as they made their in-game appearances, especially since I was a big fan of the show that most of them appeared on. And we'll touch on that soon enough in this review. But in the meantime, let's jump into the initial review. So what is it? According to Steam, Halo 3 ODST comes to the PC as the next installment in Halo The Master Chief Collection, now optimized for PC. Experience the events preceding Halo 3, through the eyes of Orbital Drop Shot Troopers, ODST, as they return to familiar ground and attempt to uncover the motivations behind the Covenant's invasion of New Mombasa. Isolated and vulnerable, use stealth and precision to survive the dangers of the Covenant occupation in a gripping new take on combat in the Halo universe. The genre is first-person shooter, sci-fi adventure. The release date was 2009 on the Xbox 360, and 2020 for the Master Chief Collection on Steam. Who made it? Developers are Bungie, 343 Industries, and Saber Interactive. And what else have they done? Well, Bungie is primarily the Halo and Destiny series. 343 Industries is pretty much just Halo. And Saber Interactive was Mud Runner, Time Shift, Inversion, and many other games. The publisher is Xbox Game Studios, and obviously they're known for a lot of my favorite games, so Sea of Thieves, Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Battletoads, and so many more games. Current price is $4.99, or you can buy the whole package, which contains Halo Reach, Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, and Halo 4, all for $39.99, which is a fantastic deal. But now let's actually jump into review and tech specs. So similar to the others, you install it through the Master Chief Collection. This one doesn't have multiplayer, so it's considerably smaller and installs quicker, which is nice. Uh, Regarding the graphics, the graphics unfortunately suffered the same fate as Halo 3 did for me. It's not the anniversary edition, so although they are primarily updated for the PC, they don't look as nice as Halo or Halo 2, which is disappointing since you get to see actors like Nathan Fillion, which is a bummer that he looks so polygonal. 
Uh, regarding audio, I enjoyed the soundtrack to Halo 3 ODST. It's a darker and lonelier soundtrack than the standard upbeat Halo games, but I think it fits the environment well. The controls, nothing different here. Same controls as the other Halo games in the Master Chief collection. I'm sure I'd probably like it more on controller, but I play with it as a keyboard just because that's what I have. Regarding gameplay, you are an orbital drop shock trooper that is part of a small squad that gets separated and you play as the various characters as you discover clues to regroup and progress the storyline. You are not a super soldier, so you must be resourceful with your ammo and health and you spend quite a bit of time hiding behind objects as your stamina increases. Regarding difficulty, when you're not a super soldier like the Master Chief, you can definitely tell. I mean, you aren't even strong enough to dual wield weapons yet. Plus, there are two primary difficult hurdles you'll face in ODST. First, ammo is scarce in this game. Be prepared to use Covenant weapons, which I am not a huge fan of, and I made that known earlier. Second, this is more of a free-roaming Halo. It's not open world, so don't think of it as like The Witcher 3, but they have a map system to navigate the city of New Mombasa, so you might get lost for a bit. Fortunately, they do have a map, and you can call in hints to guide you where you need to go, and the hint system is actually pretty good. Regarding achievements, I did take a note that it earned around two achievements for each level beaten. It didn't have them, it didn't give them away as much as Halo Combat Evolved nor Halo 2 did. However, these games definitely have a lot of achievements. I mean, the entire Master Chief Collection, like I said, is comprised of 700 achievements, which is massive. Uh, regarding pros, Halo 3 ODST took a different approach, which I applaud. You know, they had a more open map, you had to search for clues to progress the storyline, and it's more of a squad-based game. Sure, you might be alone for a large chunk of the game, but it still has that squad feeling of that dynamic of not being alone. It makes me want to play Star Wars Republic Commando, which is by far one of my favorite Star Wars games. The weapons in ODST are phenomenal, personally. They seem a little weaker, but they had a black variant of the Magnum pistol from Halo Combat Evolved with the two times scope and strong firepower. The SGM our SMG, sorry about that one, was also a solid gun. The visor mechanics were well done. It definitely helped with the dark world of Halo 3 ODST. Regarding con, the initial tutorial for aiming is nice, where you shoot the little bombs off your drop pod and you to jump out. I think that's nice, rather than like, look at the top light, look at the bottom light. I'm not a fan of those type of tutorials. However, so I thought, okay, that tutorial's fine. However, the tutorial for the map in your visor seemed extremely sluggish. And I wasn't sure if it was glitching, but oftentimes during the tutorial, it would lag quite a bit and have me do the same thing over. Like, drop a waypoint. Drop a waypoint. Why aren't you dropping a waypoint? Continue the waypoint. And it's like, I did all these things. So it's a little frustrating there. Um, as I mentioned, the map is extremely dark, which is usually only a small portion of the other Halo games. So I'm not a fan of super dark games. It just, I get it. It's just blacks never look that great on LCD screens personally. It just it blends right in too much, and you have to change the gamma, and then it looks really weird. So it, it just doesn't look great. Uh, and also another con, not really much of a con for me, but it might be a con for people. There is no multiplayer included with this one, which accounts for the cheaper price point. You know, if you were looking for a Halo game that had multiplayer and around the same price point, buy one of the other ones personally, just because you get to actually play with people and stuff like that. You can still do co-op, though. Uh, I love how... Bungie loves the Firefly series. I mean, besides the Vera comment in Halo 3, I mean, look at this cast. We have Alan Tudyk, which is Wash in Firefly, Nathan Fillion, Mal in Firefly, and Adam Baldwin, who is Jane in Firefly. What a lineup of main characters. You know, and I also originally thought Dare reminded me of a hybrid of Kerrigan from the StarCraft franchise. And after a little IMDb snooping, the actress, Trisha Helfer, is indeed the voice of Kerrigan in StarCraft 2, which I thought that was really cool to see that. So my ears weren't playing tricks. So would I recommend this game? You know, if they were charging $9.99 separately from the collection, I would have probably passed on this game, as it doesn't do as much progressing the Master Chief storyline. The superintendent, or the main point of the story, component is similar to the effect Rogue One had on the Star Wars universe. Sure, they hint at Rogue One's impact, on the Death Star plans, but it was a small component of the massive Skywalker storyline, and it could have been not made, and no one really lose anything. I mean, Grant, I loved Star Wars Rogue One, and I would have been de you know, disappointed if they canceled or something like that, 
but it, it wasn't needed. You didn't need to see how they did it. You just knew, oh, they stole the plans. And it's like, okay. You just pass over that and go on to the next part. Uh, this game has that same approach. It progresses Master Chief's storyline with a small sideline, but that's about it. However, this game is $4.99, and it's basically free if you purchase the full Master Chief collection. So in that regard, yes, I do recommend it. Plus, it gives you that mini Firefly reunion we all desire. And also, a slight disclaimer for developers for my Halo 3 review from yesterday. It is actually 343 Industries, Saber Interactive, Bungie, and Ruffian Game, as they are the group responsible for bringing Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, and Halo 4 to the Xbox One and One X. So, there you go. That's my review of Halo 3 ODST. We are wrapping out Halo Week tomorrow with Halo 4, which I have never played and I'm extremely excited for. So... Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Have a great day. Be safe, and we'll see you soon.